human trafficking. It's very tempting to turn away from this particular subject because it's a very difficult situation to comprehend. However, it's real, and it's something we really can't ignore. The statistics about this epidemic can be absolutely overwhelming. So I want to ask you to stand with me for one precious life. Will you stand with me against human trafficking to save a life? Today's program will show you how we can do it together. We can give hope to someone trapped in what seems like a hopeless situation. I will stand against human trafficking. Prayerfully consider joining me. I know that you've had some very, 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 very difficult situations and circumstances in your life. And some of you maybe have been mistreated so long that you think that's just ordinary in the way that life is, but it's not. Um, I'm sure you've heard me say that I was abused by my father sexually for many, many years. Started when I was a little, little, little girl. and. Uh, when I got old enough, he began to have sex with me, and I can pretty well figure that he raped me at least a couple, 200 times. And so I know, I know at least something about what you've been through. Probably not everything, but at least something. But the good news is, is um, I also know the healing power of God and what he can do in your life if you'll turn your life over to him. There's a wonderful scripture in Isaiah chapter 61 it says that God will give us a double reward for our former trouble. And I've held that, onto that in my life, that if I do things God's way, put my trust in Him, that He will give me a double reward for everything that I went through that was hurtful. And I'm well aware when you're in your situation that maybe even listening to somebody like me is hard to even grab a hold of that and say it's possible, but. I really want to encourage you to do everything that you can to have the life that Jesus died for you to have, which is a good life. The Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Human trafficking isn't bound by race, nationality, age, or gender. It's a hidden blight upon humanity that in some way affects us all. Several years ago, Joyce Meyer Ministry supporters began to stand against human trafficking, working together with homes of refuge around the world. The women behind me are some of the most amazing young women you will find anywhere on the planet. And their stories are so difficult to hear, but they are fighters. You see, they're coming out of situations of human trafficking. And they're here at a home called the Gabrielle House in Thailand. It's a place where they can come to find a new beginning. They're fighting for a new life for not only themselves, but often for their children. And they're finding through Christ that there are wonderful futures ahead. The girls at the Gabriel House now have a reason to smile about their future. They're receiving a safe place to stay where they can heal, along with an education and the chance to learn a trade like sewing or cosmetology. All they receive is preparing them for a future that is full of potential and hope, things they desperately need because the road they have traveled isn't an easy one to survive, as was the case for more young. Before I came here, the, the, my life when I didn't know Christ, I, I, uh, I was married once with a man, a very bad man, and he uh, abused me quite a lot. 
After a while that I was with my husband, we separated and I took care of my son by myself. And I tried to find a little job around the village, anything that I can get to take care of my son. I, I came over across the border and helped with, uh, work with uh, one Chinese family as a, like a housekeeper. The man in the house, he, he tried to approach me and then he started to ask me if I could go and sleep with him. I didn't have much choice at that time because he told me that if I didn't do what he said, he will go to the police and report me because I, I came over across the border without any paper or anything. I had to carry on living like that. He also had a, like a restaurant. He, he will take me and uh, ask me to work, sleeping with customers and stuff as well. He was watching me every step I went, so I had to do that for some time. I walked away from the house. I didn't care at that point whether he will follow me or he will do something to me. I just kept walking away from the house. And um, I stopped at one place where I heard music, you know. And I stood there and try to listen to what they were singing, you know. It was like a Christian church. So I, I stood there and listened to the singing for a long, long time. That day, it reminded me of when I was younger and I, I, I passed by the church in, in Laos. And so I, I decided to go into the church and, and sat at the back. After the service, the pastor came to me and he, he, he asked about me. So I told him my story. That day he told me about Gabriel House. That's a place that I could learn some skills and then I could have a better future. So I didn't go back to the house again that day and he brought me here. I know about Christ now, and before I didn't know anything about Him, and that is the thing that I think I'm most um, grateful about. <laughs>